Okay, here is our next Venn diagram problem. This one's a little different in that they gave us the numbers in the Venn diagram, but just take note that these are frequencies this time out and not relative frequencies. So we want to just be aware of that going forward because all of the problems on here ask us to find probabilities. So I need my answers to all be numbers between 0 and 1, meaning I need to figure out how to convert these numbers to relative frequencies. And if you remember back in chapter 1, if you want to convert a frequency to a relative frequency, you need to divide by sample size. So let me just take a moment and figure out the sample size here. All right, I've got my four areas of the Venn diagram, right? Those that drink, just drank tea, those that just drank coffee, those that drank both, and neither, right? Oh, I didn't even read the problem. Data was collected from a group of people about whether they drink tea or coffee. The information is shown in the Venn diagram. So it looks like I have my four areas of 15. I gotta add to it five, 12, and nine. So let me see what those four numbers add up to. It looks like I have 41 people in my sample. So let's just keep that in mind. My sample size is 41. So I would like the probability that somebody drinks tea. Okay. And actually for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna use the letter T. I'll use T for tea, literally, and C for coffee. But I don't wanna write out the, the whole words each time. If you wanna write out the words, feel free. All right, so how many folks actually drink tea? I'm gonna put the commonly guessed wrong answer. I get this, like I said, every semester I will hear 15 out of 41. Please be careful. If I ask you for the folks that drink tea, you need to include all the folks that drink tea, not just the folks that only drink tea. So I need my numerator to be 20. I need these 15 folks who drink tea as well as these five folks who also drink tea. Right? These folks are drinking tea, they need to be included in my numerator. So as we look at this, this answer should really be 20 out of 41. That's what I'm looking for there. And if we crunch that number on our calculator, we are looking at about 49%. So for part B, it says, what is the probability that a person does not drink tea? So when I hear the nots, the compliment's coming back up, all right? So I want everybody else. So I want the probability of tea compliment. All right, let's see who belongs in that numerator. All right, so I know my denominator is ultimately going to be 41. All right, tea complement. All right, these people drink tea. I do not want them in my numerator. These people drink tea. I do not want them in my numerator because I want the not drinkers. These people do not drink tea. Check. These people do not drink tea. I'll take them. So I want these 21 folks in my numerator. 12 plus nine being 21. When I crunch that number on my calculator, I get about 51%. And just take a look at these two probabilities. They are complementary events. These two numbers add up to one because we can divide these folks into the tea drinkers and the not tea drinkers. It's binary. So we will say that this number is rounded to 51%. And again, just take note, these are adding to 100%. You either drink tea or you don't, okay? All right, drinks both tea and coffee. So we hear the and coming in, right? Where does the and live on a Venn diagram? It lives in the football. So let me erase the work I've done so far. All right. So if I want the and, I'm looking for these five people. So if I want the probability of tea and coffee, that is gonna be five out of 41. And when I crunch that number on my calculator, I am looking at about 12%. All right, so now let's start looking for some 
uh, some tea drinkers, but those that don't drink coffee. So let me scooch this up so we can still see the Venn. And we can try and do parts D and E. So I want tea, but not coffee. Again, I would say the not is the buzzword in there. All right, so if I want tea but not coffee, I have probability of tea and coffee complement. Okay, tea but not coffee. So let's figure out who these people are. What part of my Venn diagram represents the folks drinking tea and not coffee? This time it is the left moon, right? It's these 15 folks that are drinking tea and specifically not drinking coffee. So they're not in the coffee circle. So we've got 15 out of 41. So that one gives us about 37%. Okay, so moving along for part E, I see the word neither hanging out there, right? I want the probability that a person drinks neither tea nor coffee. So the neither folks, we're trying to say they don't drink tea and they don't drink coffee. All right, so I want the probability of tea complement and C complement. Okay, so let's go figure out who these folks are. These folks drink tea, these drinks, those, these folks drink both, these folks drink coffee. It's these folks out here and the, the rest of your universe. These nine folks are the ones that drink neither. They're in neither of these two circles. So we're gonna say nine out of 41. Let's crunch that number. And I am looking at about 22%. All right, great. So we're moving along. All right, so here we go. We want part F. This one's asking what's the probability that a person drinks coffee or tea? All right, so the buzzword in there is or. And now there's a couple of ways to do this. I'm gonna do it with the formula, and then I wanna just show you the, the faster way that when you become a little bit more comfortable with Venn diagrams, you can go for. So if I want coffee or tea, I'm gonna use formula one from my formula sheet. So this is gonna be the probability of coffee plus the probability of tea minus the probability of coffee and tea. Okay, so we're using formula one, but replacing letters A and B with the formulas for my particular, uh, excuse me, with the letters for my particular problem. So we got coffee or tea, coffee, tea, coffee and tea. Here we go. So the probability that somebody drinks coffee, we calculated that Oh no, actually we didn't. We didn't do the coffee drinkers. Let's do that right now. So what was the likelihood that a person drank coffee? And again, it is not just these 12 people. It's the entire circle. So we have 17 people in this survey or in this group of people we collected data from. 17, five plus 12, those are our coffee drinkers. So let's go put them in. So that is 17 out of 41. We calculated the probability of T in part A, right? We found out that 20 out of 41 drank it. And we calculated the and over here in part C, it's that football. So I'm gonna subtract out five out of 41. And when we crunch all of that into our calculator, so I will do, let me clear this out, 17 out of 41 plus 20 out of 41 minus five out of 41, you get the decimal that is 78%, or if you wanted to see it as a fraction, it's 32. Because if you remember from your math days, when you have common denominators, you add and subtract numerators. So we have 17 plus 20 is 37, 37 minus five, sure enough, 32. So you can write either one. If you wanna write 32 out of 41, great. If you want to write it as a decimal of 78%, great. All right, so that formula, all right, so this is using formula one. This method 
will always work regardless of, I'm sorry, this formula will always work regardless of the method. So this works on bends, this works on trees, this works on tables, it works with formula only problems. But the cool thing about Venn diagrams is again, when you become more and more comfortable with them, you start to see that anytime I ask you for an or, it's just these three folks added, or these three areas of the Venn diagram added together. So let's do 15 plus five, which is 20, and then 20 plus 12 is 32. Or you can see if I just take those five, I'm sorry, those three areas, one of them had five in it, that's why I misspoke. If I just take these three numbers, add them up, there's 32. That was my numerator. I divide it by 41 to get to my relative frequency, and that's it. So the or, if you're on a Venn diagram, the or is left moon, football, right moon, always. So these three numbers added together. So over here, I could say, hey, what is the probability of C or T? Well, I know in my numerator it is 15 plus 5 plus 12, and my denominator is 41. That is 32 out of 41, so I'm going to arrive at 78%. Okay. So I've gotten to the point, and I don't, I don't mean this in a braggy way, I've just been doing stats for a while. I know that whenever I have an or on a Venn diagram, I add left moon, right moon, football. Okay. All right, this one over here is saying, hey, what's the likelihood that somebody just drinks coffee? So all I want here is the probability that I drink coffee. We actually calculated it for part F, but let's just take a look at it one more time. It's always worth repeating how to do these. So if I want the likelihood that somebody drinks coffee, it is not these 12 people. All right, these are not the only coffee drinkers in my, in my problem. All right. There are 17 coffee drinkers. There's the 12 that drink only coffee, but then there's the five coffee drinkers. They happen to also drink tea, but let's not forget they drink coffee. So I have 17 people in this problem. All right, so I got 17 out of 41 drinking coffee. So let's see what that number is. We got 17 out of 41. We are looking at about 41%. All right, so now let's get into formulas three, four, and five on your formula sheet and think about how to apply them. So this is our coffee drinking, or excuse me, our coffee, oh, I can't use my words, our drinking coffee and drinking tea mutually exclusive. So here's the word we're looking for, mutually exclusive. All right, mutually exclusive is another word for disjoint. All right, so we want to apply formula number five. Okay, and if you remember from your formula sheet, formula number five says, hey, is the probability of A and B equal to zero? All right, if it is equal to zero, then the events are mutually exclusive. Great. If it's not equal to zero, then the events are not mutually exclusive. Also great. We will figure out the answer to this question one way or the other. Now I'm not going to use A and B because my letters I'm going with are C and T. So let's see, is this true? Is the probability of C and T equal to zero? Okay, I don't know. Let's find it. Well, I want the and. The and on a Venn diagram is the football. So if I scooch back to my Venn diagram and I look at my football, I see five. I need to turn that into a relative frequency though. So now let me scooch back up. All right, so as we start to go through this, I have five out of 41 on this side. Is that equal to zero? Well, five out of 41, we calculated it in part C. 0.12 is not equal to zero. So ultimately, what is the answer to my question? No. All right, no, these events are not mutually exclusive. They're not because they can happen at the same time. I don't know about you, but I drink coffee and tea. It's very easy to do both of those things at the same time. All right, so are drinking coffee and drinking tea independent events? So the buzzword in here now is independent. 
All right, now you have formulas three and four to help you with that. So if we're talking about formula three, we're looking at is the probability of A given B equal to the probability of A. Or you could try this with formula four, which says, hey, is the probability of A and B equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. All right, so you have a couple of options to pick from here. Okay, so if I'm gonna look through this, I'm gonna, I'm going to decide, do I want to use formula three, formula four? And I don't know where you're falling on your preference. I, I talked about that in, in the actual um, lecture for chapter three, I tend to use formula four. But just to kind of remove my bias a little, I want to do both of these with you. All right, so let's try both of them just so you can, you can see where your comfort, your comfort in the formulas are. So let's try formula three first. So you could go either way. You could say t, t given coffee, coffee given T, doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna put a T here and a C here, all right? And again, if I wanted to, I could have gone C and then T. But let me try this. Is the probability of T given coffee equal to the probability of T? All right, so if I wanna try the formula three method, totally allowed, I went T given coffee. And for the record, I could just as easily have gone coffee given T. I just opted this way. All right, now the fun kicks in in that if I want to do tea given coffee, just to figure this out, now I have to use formula two. So this turns into the probability of tea and coffee over the probability of coffee. Is that equal to the probability of tea? And I think you might be starting to see why I don't always use formula three because a lot of times to get this conditional probability here on the left side, it requires a couple of more calculations. But we can do it for right now. I don't wanna shy away from it, I just wanna show you. So what was the probability of tea and coffee? We found that number in part C. So my numerator here is five out of 41, okay? My denominator is the probability of coffee itself all right, let me scooch this up a little bit. We found the probability that somebody drinks coffee over here in part G, that was 17 out of 41, right? So I've got this, I'll work that in a moment. Now let's see, is that equal to the probability that somebody drinks tea? We found that in part A, that was 20 out of 41. All right, so you can see there's a little bit more work involved when you do this method, but it's still gonna get us to the answer, all right? Now when we have fractions divided by fractions, we're gonna multiply by reciprocals, and maybe you've done enough of these at this point that you'll see that the denominators wind up canceling out. So ultimately I'm trying to figure out is five out of 17 the same fraction as 20 out of 41? Right? That will ultimately give me my answer, but I just, I gotta figure out, hey, is it true, is it not true? So let's, let's find out. Five out of 17, is equal to 29 percent. All right, 20 out of 41 is equal to 49 percent. All right, so is 29 equal to 49? No. What is ultimately the answer to this? No. These events are not independent. Now again, I think formula three in this case was a lot of work. I'm gonna do formula four, and, and I, I think it's just faster in this case. The reason it's faster is because I, I didn't have to calculate, I wasn't asked to calculate a conditional probability in any of A through H, so it's just taking me a little longer. All right, if I wanna use formula four, then we wanna figure out, hey, is the probability of A and B equal to the probability of A times the probability of B? And I gotta go check that out using my letters. So here we go, is the probability of T and C equal to the probability of T times the probability of C? Well, on the upside, we actually did calculate all three of these numbers. We calculated this in part C, we calculated this one in part A, and we calculated this one in part G. 
So I don't have any extra numbers to calculate. I just have to figure out if, if the two sides of the equation are equal. So t and c was 5 out of 41. Probability of t was 20 out of 41. Probability I had a coffee drinker was 17 out of 41. All right, so let me figure out what these numbers are. So 5 out of 41 was about 12%. 20 out of 41 was about 49%. And 17 out of 41 was 41 percent. Okay, now let me multiply these two numbers. I'll multiply this by 0.49. So is 0.12 equal to 0.20? Nope. All right, so ultimately, what's the answer? Well, these are not equal, so these events are not independent. So regardless of which formula you use, three or four, you should arrive at the same conclusion. Meaning there's never a time where you'll use formula three and get yes, they're independent, and then use formula four and get that they aren't independent. Right? So both formulas will give you the same result. All right, so there's two problems looking at Venn diagrams. We're gonna move on to table problems next, and we're gonna revisit all of this information. Same problem with the tea and coffee drinkers, but we're going to put it in a table.